uh, State Representative Raymond Cruz is joining us. Hey, Mr. Raymond, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing just great, Robert. How about yourself? Good. Y'all convened this afternoon on the House side. Are you headed down there today or are you already there? I'm already. I am uh, just got here last night. We had a uh, fundraiser for the Republican Party last night, so I spent some time on there. Uh, just had a great time getting ready for today. Okay. The, the the big debate is the governor wants more revenue to knock out the $648 million. You're still going to need a budget. How are you going to accomplish all that in two weeks, Raymond? <laughs> I tell you what, he's put us in a rough spot, hadn't he? Sure would have been a lot easier to take a budget and then just modify it a little bit. So you're saying, and you're not the first to say this, maybe he should have signed the budget last Friday instead of vetoing. Well, I tell you, I don't think there's any question at all about that. Having the House and the Senate both pass versions like that, it was a clear message that, hey, here's something we can work from. Here's a playbook, and we can uh, just add some some different maneuvers to that. But that's uh, not where he wanted to go, obviously. Why Why is that? I would, I would Because it wasn't what he wanted, because he is fomenting chaos? What is the Raymond Cruz theory? Uh, well, I don't even think his theory at this point. I think most people agree he, he just wants more revenue. And while I can understand it's a lot easier to do uh, do your job when you got more money to do it, the fact is, uh, you know, a leader's got to deal with the resources he has and makes the best decisions he can and move from there. And it just seems to me he's kind of stuck on the idea of providing all types of new services and whatever. And, you, of course, it takes money to do new things if you're not going to do more efficient things with what you already have. Raymond, revenue retention. They're all calling it that, <laughs> whatever they want to call it. Do, do you support extending a part of that penny sales tax? Well, at this, at this point, I don't personally, but I can see that is present. There, there are plenty of people now, I think, where that could be an idea that goes forward unless the governor remains stubborn and uh, acquiesces to the idea of having some kind of in, income tax increase or getting rid of some exemptions that people value. And that's where the real, I think, worry is now. There are plenty of people that are like, okay, we can understand your, your short and some areas we want to fund. We can give you a little bit of the penny there, but he's going to ask for something else, or at least uh, one of the other delegations is going to do that, and that's going to put pressure on those people that would have otherwise acquiesced and said, Here, here's some little money. Well, now you're going to present some other idea that they're staunchly against. So that's where the, the friction is going to be, I believe. Erin had a great analogy a couple of days ago, maybe late last week, and she said government is like, she said it's like an 18-year-old kid at a strip club with a $100 bill. He's not he's not coming out with change. No. Is is in your mind no matter how much money that the legislature could give to the governor is he going to spend all of that and more? Yeah, I certainly believe so. I mean that's basically the liberal agenda is there is no end. I mean it continues forever. There's always going to be another program. There's always going to be more needs. It, it just continues unchecked. If they could put some kind of limit out there and put a roadblock, say, hey, we won't go any further than this, boy, that would be helpful. But have you ever heard of the, such a road, roadblock? Uh, not, re- uh-uh. <laughs> not recently, no. no. <laughs> we were reading last night, and Aaron and I are texting back and forth, and it seems like part of the mess, the big part of the mess is is Medicaid is just, it's just beating us up. 17 cents out of every state dollar spent is Medicaid yeah. money? How how did we get into this? Is there a way out of the mess that the governor got us into by expanding Medicaid when he first took office? Well, I tell you, several ideas have been uh, put forth. As we know, in any incentive program like that, there are people taking advantage of that to the detriment of those people that truly need that kind of help. And as long as we've got people up there snapping up benefits that shouldn't be taking advantage of them that's going to hurt those people that actually really do need them and like you said 17 cents on the dollar that's crazy i mean if we look at government as a whole it's taken almost one third of the entire gross domestic product just to funnel right back into government a third i mean that's a ridiculous amount Stephen wagespeck just told us earlier this morning that in this two week these two weeks coming up lawmakers are weary they're ready to get out of there. Tempers may be flaring. Are you a little miffed that all this has been laid down on you guys for a two-week, take care of this and then move on? Well, I mean, there's definitely a, a possibility people are having those types of feelings because we feel like, hey, if you would have passed a budget, 
it'd be a matter of days and we'd be done here because most people would be like, okay, we'll give you a little bit here. Let's all go on, go ahead and go home. But that's just not been the tack that's been taken. And truthfully, I can't understand this tack. I can't quite see why that's the road uh, they continue to go down. I just don't see it. Is it. Is there any possibility at all that – that you guys might just send back sort of the, the same budget that he just vetoed. Thinking the same thing, Raymond. <laughs> I think there's always that possibility, and I think he's playing a dangerous game here. Uh, these are representatives and senators elected by their constituents, and I think that's a pretty good idea of what the public in general wants, is we want to restrain government uh, somewhat, and yet uh, he's still making a push to grow it. So. He's living in a little bit different world than, than we see ourselves in when we speak with our constituents.